different kind of live Q&A here at the Dice Tower. And I want to make this one more of a running conversation between me and you, which means it may not even look that interesting watched later on, and it only may make sense live. And there may not even be that many people who are watching. In fact, I see that there's two right now. Um, but welcome. But what I like to do here is I'm going to keep an eye on the comments pretty heavily here. And I like to talk about what you guys would like to see from the Dice Tower in 2017. Things that you think are good about the Dice Tower, things that you think are uh, bad about the Dice Tower, things that you think could be changed. And then I'll respond, and then you can respond to me. And you're going to be typing your stuff, and it's not it's, you know, there will obviously be a little bit of delay because of the way that YouTube is. Um, but I don't know. It's just a way to feel each other out to some degree. I'm always thinking every day about what I can do next with the Dice Tower. I'm always trying to think of what new things can I have, and that's why you see new stuff show up. But that stuff doesn't always just show up spur of the moment. It's something I thought about for a while. And I also certainly um, feel out the other people involved with Dice Tower. I talk to Eric, I talk to Z, I talk to Sam, and they have ideas too. But I, I always have believed that crowdsourcing is not a bad idea. Now, this doesn't mean that just because that I listen to crowdsourcing, but what I want to do is just get some ideas and or bounce ideas off you guys to see what you think. And again, if this takes five minutes, then so be it. Um, it's Monday night, and I'm sure that people have other things they'd rather do. Um, but this is going to be mostly about the video show, because the audio show, I've kind of already determined where that's headed at this point in time, and I'm already taking feedback on that through a contest with the audio show. So this is free form. You can list whatever you want in the comments. There's a lot of different things I like to talk about. Um, I want to talk about where the uh, uh, Dice Tower is right now. Uh, we are going to hit 3 million views this month, which is mind-boggling to me. Uh, 3 million views is more than my whole first like three years of, of viewing. And um, we are going to... And, you know, and so I'm always looking at the different videos that we put. We put up a lot of videos each week. We're doing the top 10 every other week. And I know that people would like to see top 10s probably more than that. Uh, but it just there's a lot of work that goes into editing a top 10 list. We are doing board game breakfast every week. We are doing board game blender and throw punch lunch every other week. I am doing um, a, board, a week in review every Monday. And I am doing a look back every Wednesday at this point in time. Um, so let's see, um, while that's being said, I see there's a couple comments here. Um, what's Origins 2017 look like for the Dice Tower? That's a little bit um, ahead for us right now. So I, um, I haven't made my plans completely. I know we'll be there. That's about it. I love the Q&A sessions, but if it's feasible, I like if Z and Sam are on them more, just have more opinions. I, I, I don't deny that. It's just that Monday, it's easier for me to get this all set up. But this is one of the reasons I want to get the studio going is so that we can have these things set up that they can be done more often. Um, they really can't do them from their house because they don't have as fast streaming at their house as I do here. Um, I do agree here. You love the outdoor filming. It's been showing up in your Sam's recent Top 100, but please, the mic's designed for outdoor filming. That is something that um, I am certainly uh, planning on. We thought about that. Uh, when we recorded our the People's Choice Top 100, when we went down to the Keys, didn't realize that the wind would be so much. I'm not seeing I'm seeing as big of a problem with it when I'm at the zoo. But yeah. Um, it would be cool if people could call in on the Q&A. Um, I thought about this, and that's an interesting idea, but I need a number to do that. I'm not really keen on giving my personal number out to the world in general. And... Uh, when you let people call in, like, you know, the, the talk shows that have people call in, they got a screener because if there's someone who's crazy calling in, you know, or just someone who's not a very good fit for the show calling in, you know, they want to just go on and on and on, that caller can screen that person out most of the time. Well, maybe it's not that big of a deal. Um, I'm not sure if it's possible, but I'm a completionist. And I've unsubscribed from Dice Tower simply due to how much content populates my YouTube subscription list. I understand that, and I, I apologize. 
I thought about that, and a lot of people thought about that, and like, oh, can we get... One of the big things that people say is, why not have different channels, okay? And I'm actually considering moving the kids' stuff to another channel. The problem is, multiple channels is more work to control those. It's hard to have everything underneath them. Uh, one channel, uh, some, some videos will get lost in one of the more of the channels. I kind of like having everything under one channel. I know as a subscriber, that stuff just comes barreling in. Um, but I'm not sure I ever wanted the Dice Tower necessarily to be, if you notice, I never really say subscribe to our channel, subscribe to our channel, subscribe to our channel, because I really want you to kind of look at our channel as a library of content. And if you like a show that we put out, let's say Board Game Breakfast, then every Monday you're going to look for that show, per se. I wish I could somehow subscribe to non-review content. Um, yeah, I understand that. And... I, I, if someone come up with a good solution to that, but honestly, separate channels causes a whole lot of problem. It causes a, a dilution of the channel. I think that's what it would cause. Um, all right. Um, I love videos on how you can teach new games. It's something that I've been thinking about for a while, you know, videos on how to teach a game. Uh, that's just one of those videos that requires a lot of effort put into it, which is why I've kind of put that one on the back burner. Yes, okay, uh, uh, Mitchell brings up a good point. A more consistent branding for Dice Tower. This is something I really want to do. Consistent lower thirds, consistent... All sorts of things, YouTube intros, etc. That's that's a very expensive proposition, honestly. I'd like to have it done, but as I'm finding, even people who are friends of the Dice Tower who've offered to do this, the prices they quote at me, I, I I simply can't afford them. I mean, when I'm paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for just one piece of art, I I, I really can't afford that. I mean, for we're just not we're not bringing that kind of income to to justify that. I'd love to have this, you know, a unified thing across the board, but I'm just not sure how it's possible. Um, I've made a point of not giving numerical ratings in review videos, but they show up in the website in week review, so why not in the review itself? Week in review gives us that benefit of looking back at it and doing it, and I, I don't mind putting in a week in review, but I really, really want people to look at the review and not at the number. I don't think the number is as important as the actual content of the review itself. That being said, I'm, I'm softening on this. If you notice in every game is awesome, me and Jason are giving out the review numbers, so I might be persuaded on that. Uh, the channel playlists are missing videos are out of order. It's really worse for the top 100s. Yes, I'm not, I'm not gonna argue that. Um, that's an area where we are really falling behind um, we definitely need to get the channel playlist up to date, so we'll get on the on the ball with that. Um, now, this is one, and this is one that I wanted to talk about a little bit here too. Peter says, "While you, Sam and Z, have good insight and opinions, I really enjoyed Suzanne being in charge of the talkback, and I'd like to see her or others involved with future talkbacks and other topics. I would love to do that more. That was kind of a perfect storm because she and Mandy and me were all at BGGCon. The fact is that the talkback with the mics and everything that we have for it." We don't have those around the world, so we, we can't like send those in a box to our contributors. So we can ask a contributor maybe to do a talk back, um, but it may not come across as well. And there was, there'll usually only be one because they're not usually together in groups. And this is one thing a lot of people don't realize about multi-user formats. In multi-user formats, there has to be some sort of direction. Now, I am perfectly content knowing that this is a bit of inside baseball here, I guess, but I'm perfectly content on knowing that in one of our back talk episodes or in a top 10, I am not the funniest person there. I am not the most interesting person there, but you know what I am there? I'm there to make sure that we are never not talking, that we are never not boring, and that we stay on point. And if you watch me, that's, that's one of the main reasons that I'm involved with Every Game is Awesome and Double Trouble and, you know, when those two people reviews, 
my goal is to make sure that stuff stays on point. Well, not everyone does that, and not everyone, you'll see sometimes a group of people get together, and sometimes they're talking over each other and things, and you kind of need one person to, at, even if it's subtly behind the scenes, or just keep things on track. It's, it's, a, it, 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 it's, a, it's an acquired skill, I think. And sometimes it's noticeable. You'll see, well, Tom's definitely staring at it that way. But my goal is to make it not noticeable and to kind of just keep everything on track. And so to have other people do talk back, I need to have that person in each of those. And so that's kind of an interesting thing I would like to see. Um, the talk back is kind of where all three of us come back. And I didn't think it was appropriate for three of us to talk back about that. My, what I had made those comments. It seemed like a, it was a much more natural fit there. And I wouldn't mind recording more of those at conventions. It's just that we'd have to record a whole bunch of them in a row and then spread them out over the course of the year, which is possible, but conventions are already busy enough. So I don't know. I, I like to find a good solution for that. Please go back and do reviews of older Evergreen games like Ticket to Ride. Haven't we done this to some degree? I think we've done reviews of most of the Evergreen games. More combined partnerships with other review sites like Shut Up and Sit Down, Rado, Watch It Played, air on all channels. We all get along for the most degree, right? But we all want to be the best on our channels. I mean, I think there's that. Crossovers are fine, but they're hard to pull off again. I mean, you have to work together with the other people. And who's in charge of the crossover? Who schedules it? That's things like that. I'm not opposed to a crossover. In fact, I had Rodney and Rado come on my show, but it was easy. I, I flew them in. It was expensive, though. I flew them in. We played some games, did some live shows, recorded some top ten lists. And that was great. People really enjoyed that sort of thing. But to do it uh, long distance is a more difficult proposition. I see people are talking about the Google voice numbers. That's not necessarily a, a bad idea. I'm more concerned about the, uh, the uh, what do I do when people just call it and then I, they're, they're trolls, I guess is the word for it. Um, I do want to point out here, um, okay, <laughs> I guess I, I need to, I guess I need, I need to catch up here. I'm, I'm really uh, falling behind here. I'm trying to make this a live conversation, so let me keep going here. Um, I, I appreciate the, the nice words on um, the, the back talk I did about inclusivity. I want to be clear that my goal is not to turn this channel into some political arena. I'm not here to talk about a whole bunch of issues. This was one particular issue. I don't think it's political at all. I think it's a realistic issue that I deal with and that whatever you think politically or um, wherever you, you lie on the scale, women and gaming is a big deal. They're there and we have to deal with it. And we need to deal with it properly. That's why I brought it up. But you're not going to see me bringing issues up like that all the time. Or actually, I'll say, rarely bring them up. Uh, I bring up things I think are important to talk about. But I'm not here to, to like, follow a certain kind of ideology on the channel. Um, reduce the length of the intro. I have a very quick cold open before the title to let viewers know if they want to watch the whole video. I don't know what you mean by that. You're like saying beforehand, this is the game, and then go into the intro. I noticed you've been using the box art from games for the reviews for the screen cap, but I feel like the aesthetics of that's more confusing. Have you gotten any other feedback? I've gotten mixed feedback on the new thumbnails. I really like thumbnails where I can just glance at it and know that it's talking about a game and it looks exciting. And I felt like our blue thumbnails were all starting to, to fade together. Um, you love more MP3s of videos. I love to watch and find myself ripping dozens of videos. Well, we do put a lot of them up on Dice Tower Audio. We don't put them up, and, and honestly, it's because just lack of interest. There's maybe, uh, well, I can pull that information up right now, actually. Let me, let me do that. Uh, let's see how many people are, are, are downloading things off of our, I haven't looked at this in a while, so this might be an interesting thing to look at. Uh, Dice Tower Audio is one of my many, many domain names that I, I control. And so let's see here. So I got lots of different shows. They're actually, I'm down to seven shows now, so I guess not as many shows as I thought I, I run. So in November, there were 22,000 downloads. And I know some of you are like, that's a lot. Um, yes, but let's see. 
of the different things that we put up at any given time. So Sam just posted his top 100 games of all time, number 10 through 1, and that's gotten 62 downloads. But that's only been up for a while. So let's, let's go to something that's been up for a while. Uh, the 12 Games of Christmas things. We did those a couple weeks ago. Those are up to 300 downloads each. And that, that's interesting, but it's just not a ton. Uh, the thing that we've had downloaded the most are top 10 good games that stress us out, and that's been 1,026. That's the most. Now, I know that you say, well, you know, I really like doing it, and I appreciate that, but um, 1,000 for our most and an average of 300 just means the priority isn't there. So we are, we are doing these. Um, we are sticking stuff in that channel, but to stick all of it in there, the cost to run a channel, the uh, Ellips, Ellipson channel, uh, goes up depending on how much you're putting in per month. So I want to stay below our limit, which is why we don't put everything in. Um, I love that you put so much content out. Okay, well, see, obviously, there's going to be different things back about that. Um, on thumbnails, you want a design that's easy to identify both reviewers and games for. The old format made it easier to figure out the reviewer, the new games. Yeah, you're right. So maybe there's someone out there who knows how to design a good thumbnail. I had some people quote me on a thumbnail, but it's just expensive, and I don't really. Again, I'm trying to cut costs as much as I can on the dice tower. Um, couldn't there be a separate dice tower contributors channel? No, and I'm not ever going to do that. And I'll tell you why right now. If I made a dice tower contributors channel, it wouldn't be the dice tower, right? It'd just be other people, and. Uh, then no one would ever go and watch that if possible. But if possible, I'm going to get other people to watch other contributors based on my own sheer, my reviewing power, if that makes sense. If I'm going to put them in their own channel, then it's not really a Dice Tower channel, um, and it would become a lesser channel, and it would be a, it would be me versus them, and I don't like that, that stuff at all. Dice Tower forums. It's a good idea. This is one I brought up before, and I got shouted down for it. I've toyed with the idea of moving our forums off of Board Game Geek and over to our website itself. I think that would drive more traffic to our website. But people really like the ones on Board Game Geek. They're very active forums. I mean, they're, uh, they're something that's posted there every day, multiple, multiple threads. Um, but I'd like to hear feedback on that. I, I would, the forums, I, I, at BGG, I have a lot more, last time I talked about moving from them and they gave me more control over the forums and that was nice. But I still don't have complete control. I'd love to pick, like we have three categories, news, uh, general, and off-topic. I like to have like 15 different categories where we can go and talk about different things. I love that. Um, at the same time, there are some benefits to being on BGG with the pictures and stuff. So what do you guys think about that? Um, by the way, for those of you who are just coming in, we're talking about the Dice Tower itself. So I'm not answering like game questions right now. This is just like a conversation between me and you guys about... Um, the channel itself. I wish I could have a channel just live stream stuff. That's that might be people keep pushing me towards Twitch and I've resisted Twitch which based solely on the reason that I personally hate going to Twitch and that's always been my mantra with the Dice Tower is I make the reviews that I would want to watch. I make the kind of shows that I would want to watch. I, I, I make a podcast that I would want to listen to and so um, I haven't gone to Twitch because I hate watching stuff on Twitch. Now, maybe you guys can convince me. If enough people think I should go to Twitch, I would. I'm just, it needs to, I need to make sure it would tie back to the YouTube channel as much as possible. Maybe that would help. Um, I like your videos on gaming terms. You should make more. Well, we thought about that, but we actually ran out of gaming terms that needed to be defined. I guess I could be more, pick more and more obscure stuff at a time. I've been thinking about making like some explanations of things. Like I was just thinking yesterday, what if I made a video about trick-taking games and saying, hey, you don't know, you don't know what a trick-taking game is? What's Trump? What's, you know, what's a lead suit? What's a taking a hand of cards? What are the different kinds of trick-taking games? I thought that'd be interesting, just be a lot of work, but I'm thinking about doing that, stuff like that. I don't think this is a bad question here. Uh, you say, trying to be sensitive, do you think there would be a way for you to train some of your video contributors, like editing and how to reduce awkwardness? I think it would improve show quality. I agree, and there is times where I'll point things out to different people, um, and there we are trying to get stricter on initial videos that we come in. That being said, I really think our contributors are light years, where everybody was just a year ago. I really, 
I really am really proud of Board Game Breakfast, especially just all the contributors there. It's good. Um, the, all, not all the reviews are up to where maybe I would want them to be, but my goal with the Dice Tower is to help people improve and to help get more voices out there. Um, you like the new standard transitions on breakfast? I really appreciate that. I, I, I tried to put some effort into that. I haven't changed all the transitions yet. I hate to give up Chaz's transition. You know, it's like so ingrained that that's Chaz's transition, but I may change it at some point. Um, you'll probably see them all changed eventually. Um, a more freeform, in-depth discussion of games and meta-analysis. Think reviews of films, but about a specific game or jointly related game. Something to take your time. That's, isn't that what the top tens are, maybe? I, I think maybe you'll need to explain to me more what you need. I loved your videos with publishers and designers during conventions. Can you do more of those, but with Google Hangout or something? I've thought about that, using the Google Hangout to bring a publisher on. Now, I realize that the problem is, again, when you use Google Hangout with a publisher, they're not going to have as good of quality. And when you use Google Hangout, suddenly our quality dips, too. Uh, because you're streaming two different people. I have really good streaming here at the house right now. The person that I'm going to be interviewing will likely not have it. I will suddenly have to wear headphones because I need to listen to what they're saying. And so that kind of diminishes the quality of the whole thing across the board. It can still be done, but it's more difficult. And each person you add makes that difficult. Also, everybody and their sister and brother is doing interviews at conventions. I, I, I'm at, like, even at BGCon, which is not that big of a convention, I watched the publishers next to me get interviewed by like six or seven different people, video interviews. What am I adding to that? That's, that's a bunch of noise. I, I, I don't want to interview to promote. Now, we do so very specifically twice a year. We do at the Gamma Trade Show and we do at Origins, and those are promotional things, and I don't mind doing it those times. And I'm considering doing it a third time, but we'll talk about that later. But um, uh, the, I, I don't want to keep doing that. I want to talk to people about interesting things. Like Board Game University, I always thought was a more interesting show because I wasn't, I didn't have these people on to showcase what they were doing. Instead, I had them on to talk about what they've done and to teach other people. Would it be within the brand of the Dice Tower to create videos or episodes of the podcast about non-game design aspects and careers within the board game industry? Uh, I, I don't know exactly what you mean there. I would love to see a por as a portion of your videos, maybe Board Game Breakfast, a portion listing what games are being released to board game stores for that week if feasible. I have a pretty good line on what board games are coming out any given week, but it's never guaranteed. You never sh know for sure. And uh, it's basically just tied to a distributor. If you notice, Man vs. Meeple is doing it uh, with uh, GTS distribution. I have access to some of these distributors, and I could probably post some kind of information on that. But I found that that makes the shows not so interesting in the end. And I, when I, di I used to do Hayer's upcoming stuff, people didn't seem to be as interested in it. And Board Game Geek has a pretty good job of it. Need a dedicated war game reviewer? Well, this is one of those times where I say, hey, I need someone to step up and do it. I'm certainly willing to add a dedicated war game reviewer to my show, but no one has offered. So what can I do? I can't just force someone. You know, um, I, I can't force someone to do something. A video version of the call-in show that Rich Sommer started back up with a new cardboard. An unscripted 30 to 60 minute call-in show would be fun. I'm not opposed to that idea, and I'm seeing a lot of people like it, so something like that may happen in the future. Um, I'd have to think of a way to, to make it so that you could hear the people talking well. That might be interesting. I've already talked about a little bit about Google Hangouts. Um, I've never been a big fan of Google Hangouts. Again, I think the quality, if you watch some of the board game Google Hangout shows, there's, there's several of them. They're just awful quality. Uh, or one person looks good and the other people look bad, and I have to stop watching them. I'll listen to them, but watching them is problematic. And then someone will fade out and disappear halfway through. Um, that's the, the, the problem I think about it. What about a show that has more insider info as interviews with designers and tours of facilities? Tours of facilities is something I'm, I'm trying to work on. 
um, but it's very expensive and it's really time consuming. To take a tour of a facility and get good video and everything takes you know, a couple days probably to do and then it takes even longer uh, to edit that and put it together. And then, yeah, you're right, it's expensive to get the people. So some people here are saying they like leaving out the number of the video. I don't think everyone should do the Dice Tower Judgment Seal complete with Gavel, but it would be nice to get the seals of approval, excellence, and other contributor reviews. That is actually something that we're going to be working on and, and changing. So that's coming. Finally getting a tour of Jason's collection. Well, again, I, I, I don't know how, how much I can say this. His collection is in a very dark garage that does not open to sunlight and daylight. Well, it does, okay, I'm sorry. It does open to sunlight and daylight on one side, but you would not be able to see the rest of it. It would be a really bad video unless I took in some major lighting. He also lives an hour from me, and he's certainly willing to travel that, but I don't always want to drive up to his house to do this. It's just going to happen someday, but I don't know when. Maybe in 10 years. Uh, Dice Tower Junkie of the Week, a set of written questions open to be answered by the listeners, and you can have them introduced while showing viewers the diversity within the board gaming community. I actually don't understand that. My apologies. Is it possible for timestamps? Uh, what do you mean? We put timestamps on Board Game Breakfast. With any show that has different uh, contributions, we're putting timestamps in on them now. If you mean reviews, then no, I don't, I don't want to put timestamps in those. Um, well, right, right, right. Uh, someone said, fair point, needing someone to guide and talk back, but I was impressed with how Suzanne kept things going. Yeah, she was someone who I would say, yeah, she could also do that. I'm just saying that those people are not as, as, as common as you might think. Um, and she does a great job, but again, she and I live on opposite sides of the United States. We're not near a lot of other contributors. It's possible I had the cameras and audio. It's just, it's kind of a perfect storm that we need to, to get this to happen. You mentioned which non-top 10 videos are the most views, thumbs up. Which video is the most thumbs down? I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, well, probably the newest back talk. Got a lot of thumbs down from troglodytes. I know, I know. I shouldn't call them troglodytes. Um... In my opinion, review scores and weekend review are hurting more than helping. I tend to only seek out the reviews of the highest scores rather than watching most like I used to. I understand that, but I'm not necessarily opposed to you doing that. Not everyone's going to do that, but if that's what you want to do, you know what? Then those are the games that deserve to be watched more often. I'm trying to fight a battle to get, to get publishers to publish excellent games, not mediocre games. Not games that are pretty good, but excellent games. So if you're looking at only the ones I consider to be excellent, well, good for you then. I'm, I'm not upset by that at all. Um, have you ever seen Movie Fights by Screen Junkies? I don't actually know what that means, but I'm going to guess two games in, one game out, which we do in the Dice Tower sometimes. Yes, but I'm limited right now to easily uh, contributors between me uh, Sam and Z with Jason and Melody as other people come in, but I can't have people come in all the time. Again, you're kind of pushing towards this Google Hangout, so I'm kind of looking for more content that we can do without bringing in all these other people. Perhaps similar to the Secret Cabal, you could introduce an RPG section. No, I'm very strongly opposed to an RPG section. Not because I hate RPGs and everything, but we need to keep the channel focused to some degree. We're already trying to cover every board game in humanity, um, except Cards Against Humanity. But anyway, uh, we're trying to cover every board game that exists. Um, adding RPGs in would just be too much. On Board Game Breakfast, is it possible to set up some way to skip to the next segment? Well, you can go to the show notes and click there. Uh, one time I put in annotations that let you skip to the next segment. Now, annotations are problematic, and I'll tell you why. Two, two reasons. They, they, they look dumb. They really do. The only way annotations look good is if you build them into the video and then put boxes around them, which is a ton, ton of work. Um, but annotations just look junky. 
They don't work on mobile devices. And uh, there, there are a lot of work. I mean, a lot. Annotations are not a minor thing to put in the video. They are a ton of work to put in. And we have put annotations in some of our videos, in some of our top tens. We put annotations and said, hey, go check out the review here. And I have yet to hear any positive response to that, which makes me think it's a lot of work for not a lot of reward. Maybe, again, you guys can do it. Reviews of movies that were board game based? Maybe. But maybe. You can subscribe to just playlists. So if I made playlists of the categories. Well, that's interesting. I did not know that you could subscribe to just a playlist. I know you get your most negative feedback from live plays, but I'd really enjoy more. They're a great way to look at games. I tell you, I, 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 I know people like the live plays. We certainly get a lot of response in them, but... You know, I'm someone who can weather a lot of negative comments, and I just have a hard, hard time dealing with the negative comments that come from live plays. Um, have you produced a video style guide for contributors to give them some direction on framing, lighting, and presentation style? Well, the thing is, I'm learning all this stuff myself. And I have a really good camera, and I build up to where I'm at now. I was never that great to begin with, and so I can't really, um, I can't really push that other people do that. I they're going to build up to where I'm at too at some point in time. I don't know a video style guy would be useful for me because also every place that you're recording is going to be different. Uh, well, there's someone who likes the new thumbnails. That's nice. Uh, oh, two people. Yay. Have you ever thought about opening a voting system for games reviewed for, by Miami Dice videos? <laughs> the voting system. This is something that gets brought up uh, several times. Uh, I'm doing the voting system for the top ten list. And I'm not necessarily opposed to that, even though sometimes I'm going to do a top ten list anyway. But I will probably never open up voting for reviews unless I make some sort of Kickstarter stretch goal or whatever. But the fact is this. I want to review what we want to review, right? And I want to review the games with Sam that I think make sense that work with him. I don't want that being dictated to us. I watch Rado. Rado does a re lets people vote on which games, and sometimes he's like, "Why won't people vote this game up?" And I'm thinking, "I'll just review it." You know, I why why should I wait? No, that would be so stressful. We'd be like, "Oh, we don't want to play this game," and everyone's saying we have to. No, I, I don't think the voting is a good idea. You're saying the mic is rubbing on my shirt the whole time. It's making a lot of noise. I think actually um, when I was setting this up that there's something wrong with the mic. And I apologize, guys, if that's the case. Because the mic is not really rubbing against my shirt. Um, I don't know what the deal is. Uh, I'm going to have Derek look at it tomorrow. Hopefully it didn't mess up my reviews I did today. Um, but I apologize. It's not the fan either, I don't think. It might be the fan. Why is the Dice Tap Steeple separated from the Dice Tower? Because it's a completely different show. The Board Game University is also separate from the Dice Tower, so is many of my other shows. Um, Achievement Hunter has a community channel that works fairly well. I was thinking similar to that for the contributors. Mm, here's the deal. Um, we'll take Geek and Sundry. Geek and Sundry made their little vlog channel. Hardly anyone watched that compared to the Geek and Sundry, and that's not what I'm looking for. The website needs a facelift. Well, I paid a lot of money for that website the way it is. I don't know that I want to pay that much more money to lift, you know, get the website done again. Um, the website is what it is right for right now, and honestly, we don't have a ton of traffic there, so. I don't know if I want to put that much money into the website again. Um, there's this cool new thing called Alpha. Uh, no. Um, so some people don't like Twitch. And so I see that. And some people do like Twitch. There's a lot of different people. As software developing, I'm, I'm always curious, being reasonable if you had funding, is there any software you'd like to have created that would make life better for the Dice Tower or add value? Um, 
yeah, I mean, uh, I would love to see a version of that compare different games and make your own top ten list type of thing. Uh, I, I would like something like that, um, especially if it was a mobile thing where you just click the button on your on your device and you just went. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Oh man, people would sit there. I'd sit there in line and sort my games out. I think people would like that. Um, a lot of people are talking about the sound static. I, guys, I'm really apologizing about that. I don't really know if there's anything I can do about it. So hopefully it's not too distracting. Um, especially if it was a mobile thing where you just click the button on your, on your device. I'm not hearing it too much on my channel, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um, definitely we have a diverse opinion about people wanting the content all on one channel and the content in different channels. So that's interesting. Some people are saying they like it. Some people say not. Um, now, a lot of people, uh, this comes up a lot, and someone just mentioned, Malcolm mentioned it here, about he enjoys a top 10 list, and they like to see updated top 10 lists. Well, here's the deal. Yeah, we're going to update them, but what you may think is several years ago is really not that long ago. I believe the oldest top 10 list we've done is four years. That's not that old. On the, on the audio channel, I have a rule that they have to be five years old before I redo them, even though I break that rule by accident more than once, more than twice. Um, but I don't mean to do that. So... I'm going to redo some of these older top 10 lists, but we still have a lot of top 10 lists that we haven't done. Like tomorrow, we're recording our top 10 lunchtime games, games to play at lunch with other people. And then we'll be our, doing our top 10 games from 2016 after that. And so there's, there's plenty of top 10 lists. We will go back and do some of them. We've already redone the top 10 essentials game, and we've done our top 10 cooperative games over again. You'll see the other ones get done at certain points. Videos of the game nights, I don't want to do that right now at least, especially because we're doing them at a store where people curse up a storm sometimes. It's not, it's not the best store. I mean, the, the, the people are very nice who own it, but the, there's magic players in there who just are foul mouth every once in a while. And it's bad, bad lighting, bad seating. Yeah, you don't want to see uh, us playing videos there. Thank you, for, by the way, for all the nice words about Board Game Breakfast. How many total contributors does Dice Tower have? At least 80 at this point. There's a lot. What about creating PDF files for friendly local gaming stores to use and help gamers? I, I don't... PDF files? I don't know what you mean by that. Are you, like, saying advertisements, maybe? Um... A short, maybe even live series where the Dice Tower crew talk about some ideas for board games that they've had themselves, like, oh, that would make a good board game type thing. That would just be us shooting a breeze, I guess. And, you know, those ideas come and then they come right out of our mind. We'd have to be writing them down every time we think about them. Um... Since your non-game top 10 seem to be so well received, did you consider letting contributors showcase non-game skills or opinions in a regular, very short length feature? I don't know what you mean by that, I guess. Oh, I see what you're saying. You actually wrote backwards. Um, like a tour of Eric's sound room, maybe some Dave Luza improv, or finding out that somebody plays the bagpipes. I don't know. And by the way, our top 10 non-thing have not been that well received. They got like 15,000 views or something compared to the 50, 60, 70,000 that the top 10s do. So I don't know if they've been that well received. They're fun to do, but. Uh, one of the things I want you guys to realize is that not everyone can do everything that you want because not everything can be set up. So for example, some people say, I think Jason should do his own segment. Well, that, that that's true, but you know what? Jason doesn't have a video camera and Jason doesn't have microphones. So anytime Jason does a segment, he has to come down here, we have to set it up, and we have to edit it. And that's a lot of work for us on our end and a lot of work for him to come down here and do that. So I have him come down here and record Q&As with me and things, but uh, we can't always have him do all these segments on his own. That's just a lot of work for him So, and for us too. So sometimes it might sound good, oh, you need to do more of this. Well, sometimes those things just are not possible. Logistics is a real problem, right? We deal with contributors and people all over the world. But logistics is a big deal. Um, 
we, me having Sam and Z and Derek able to come over every day, that's why when I hired a video guy, I said, you have to be able to move here to Florida. It was a big deal for me. Um, a history of games. I thought about doing a history of games, but it's a very, that'd be a lot of work to put into that. Mm. A monthly spotlight review where we see an unboxing games played while we value for review and some behind the scenes. <laughs> you know, one of the things that Jason's really good at is doing the blogs when we go to conventions. Do you know why he's good at doing those blogs? Because he's always remembering to do stuff. We'll be in the middle of something and pull out a video. And sometimes people are like, Tommy, you seem grumpy and mean to Jason. Yeah, because I'm in the middle of doing something else and there's this video camera in my face. Um, and so I'm like, ah, get out of my face. And so and we pretend to be grumpy and mean on purpose to get him to stop videoing us. And it's like, wow, he always remembers. We forget all the time because we're doing other things. And so these behind the scenes things sound great, but you forget because you're actually doing stuff. So to set a camera up to do behind the scenes is something you always forget. I have toyed with the idea um, and this is an idea I've had where when boxes come in, I don't open them and I just set them aside. And then one day I do a video, a live video and say, okay, we're going to open up all the boxes that we got this week and look at them. Oh, this is interesting. Here's my one hang up on that though. I'm going to get some games and I'm going to look at them and say they look interesting. And then I won't get to those games for months maybe. And I'll hear people go, why haven't you reviewed this yet? 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 That's my only hang up on that. Otherwise, I'm certainly interested in maybe possibly doing that. What do you guys think of that one? Would you do a longer term look at a game? That's not something I'm interested in. I apologize, I'm just not interested in that at all. Um, maybe other people do. Well, so much for me staying up with the conversation. I'm really far behind on everybody. Uh, let's see where we're at here. Um, <laughs> more top tens may be tough, but people love the dynamics of you, Z, and Sam discussing games, especially when you disagree. A new series where you three debating a topic for 20 minutes could be fun. We, we've actually started that series. It's called Back Talk. Check it out. Um, what's the best hotel to stay at around Dice Tower kind of summer? I'm going to say uh, Caribe Royale, which is where it's at. Uh, but that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Now, um, talk to a designer about design history. Okay, let's just take that off the table for now, guys. I, I apologize. I know a lot of he people keep bringing it up. I'm just not going to start that now. I might start in the future but I'm just not gonna start a designer interview series. So I apologize, I know people keep mentioning it, but I, that's a hard pass for me at this point in time for many reasons, but mostly because of time. I can include a people's rating along with your approval. This could be by vote or BGG rating. Nah, I don't know, that, I mean, I'd have to go hunt it down every time. And sometimes I'm the first person to have a game. I don't know if that's very useful. Hmm. Also, the BGG ratings aren't very useful to me. I mean, they're going to be somewhere between a 6 and an 8. They're not, there's not a very large divergent between the ratings. Um, so you guys would like to see these um, Google Hangouts, even if the quality's bad? Because that's really been my big hangout with these. It's like, I, just, I know the quality's bad. And that's why I haven't done them very often. Ha <laughs> ha! If an individual wanted to contribute on the dice tower, how would you go about it? I just posted a, a, a FAQ today with that very question inside it. Uh, but uh, basically, email me. What about a Q&A where the questions were chosen ahead of time from a mailbag? You asked this before. I know you have. Um, and that's actually what our podcast is. <laughs> <laughs> the Dice Tower Podcast, that's what we do. We have the questions and we answer them. Uh, we have them pulled out ahead of time. Um, oh, I guess people, I've also told you to watch the FAQ. 
Would I be open to the idea of receiving video questions from listeners, watchers, that two of the board game breakfast and answer them? If someone did that, I would consider it, but I wouldn't promise it. What about videos of you guys doing something other than gaming together, like fishing or something? <laughs> Again, that falls in that category of we forget to run the camera. More family game live plays would be fun, such as like 30 or party games. I'm, gonna, I'm planning on having something like that, maybe after the cruise. Since Sam and Z have started doing reviews, I'm often left wondering your opinion on some of them. Can you do a series where you cite the reviews, give one of your own without the rules segment? Well, not really. Sometimes, most of the time, I don't play the games they're reviewing. Uh, that's why they're reviewing them. We just don't have time to play every game. <laughs> and if I really want to give my thoughts on one of their games, I'll do a review of it myself. Um... Let's see. The Q and A's flow better when you're off camera calling out questions for who's answering than the ones where you do both. Is getting someone to do that when you're doing the Q and A's yourself a possibility? Well, maybe, but I really am like to be the one to pick out the, the ones I'm gonna answer here. Um, because I'm still head moderator on Dice Tower, and so there are some questions which aren't, aren't going to get answered. And I don't want to have someone ask me one of those questions. I'm like, oh, that's kind of an awkward question that asked me, and then I have to run it off. When I'm ask so when I'm the one behind the thing asking the questions, no problem. I'll make sure those awkward questions don't get asked. But it's, it's I mean, I can have a list of, hey, if this question gets asked, don't, don't read this one out loud. But it's one, sometime one might get through or something. Um... But I, okay, but I do understand the reasoning behind that, right? Because you'd rather have someone else ask a question so I can just sit here, listen to the question, and respond it, rather than you sitting here watching me through, scroll through questions. That is a, an idea, and I do understand that. Um, a second team top 10 list, that's not a bad idea. Hamtag was an alternate, but they went and did their own channel. So I'm not opposed to alternate top 10 lists, although I tell you, that, that chemistry that me, Sam, and Z have is, is just there. I'm really glad that I found it. It wasn't like it was something I, I had planned ahead of time. It just worked. And that chemistry is just not there between a lot of people. There, I've seen a lot of shows where there's two or three people. And with board games, I don't always see that chemistry. Now, you can see it like with the Shut Up and Sit Down guys. They have that chemistry back and forth. Um, I see it on a lot of sports shows where that chemistry is there with like the sports commentator. I don't like sports much at all, but I'm always fascinated by the commentators back and forth, how they talk in some talk shows. But there's a lot of shows, a lot of YouTube shows where there's not a lot of chemistry between the hosts. So it's hard to force that into being. A cooking show with me? Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think the voting keeps coming up because fans like interaction. Are there other ways for fans to interact and participate? That's true. I do know that. Um, I'm trying to, yeah. Well, I mean, the top voting on the top tens is certainly a way for fans to participate, except, ah, that's interesting. See, we don't do voting on the top tens for the top ten list that we do. But what if we did? Would you guys like that? That's not necessarily a bad idea. I mean, it would take a while for us to get to that, but. I thought about that before, but we need to find some way to differentiate that from the uh, audio list on our website. Hmm, how would I do that? I'll have to think about it. But would that be interaction? Would that help? That might work. Have you thought about making Dice Tower locals? A way to sponsor local meetups, have them participate in local Dice Tower cons? Nah, compete against there. Oh, I don't know that I want to, like, I'm not trying to franchise the Dice Tower at this point.
Maybe you can do a versus show where you play a game against a real human, not us. It'd be fun with Jason or Melody. Well, we've done that before. I played Jason, and I think I played Melody online. I'm not sure if I played Melody, but I've definitely done Jason. You know, Trevin, you say that if the, 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 we don't get traffic because the site's bad, I, I actually, I'm going to take some offense to that. I don't think the site's that bad. You know, we, uh, when I go to DiceTower.com, it's not like, it's not like the, uh, the website is hard to find any, really that hard to find anything on. If I go to the very first column, there's an About Us thing at the top there, and when you slide down, it has our email right there. I, I don't know that that's that difficult to find. And the FAQ is the second thing on there that takes you right to the uh, FAQ about our website. If you, and so I'm going to take some offense to that, that, that the website is that bad. I'm, I'm not going to argue that it's the best website ever at all, but I don't think it's that bad. But here's the deal. It was pretty bad. We made it better. I said, all right, the new website is open. And I watched the traffic, and it was barely a blip. It really was. People were like, oh, that's cool. And they went their way. There was not, I mean, because even if it was bad at the beginning, there should have been like a huge surge of traffic as people went and looked at all this stuff. But there really wasn't. So I don't know. Uh, a lot of people watch our YouTube videos straight from the channel. That's where most of it is. Would it be more beneficial to pay contributors who have solid content to make the Dice Tower content better? Well, I'm paying Chaz Marler for that this year. But... Yeah, we could pay contributors, but where is all that money coming from? That's the biggest problem, right? I love to pay contributors, but the first thing I tell contributors when I talk to them is, hey, we can't pay you. Maybe in the future we can, and I bring them to conventions, and I do little things for them if I can, but um, it's, it's an expensive thing uh, to be paying all these contributors. We're not making millions of dollars. We're not even making a million or even half a million. Or, well, we made a quarter million, I guess, this past year, but that... That money goes away really quickly, especially with Kickstarter taking 25000 of it. Um, oh, I do my own personal top 100. Is this like Sam? I, I did that uh, a couple months ago. I miss a deluxe podcast, the picks, the chapters. No, we, we can't bring those back. That, that feature is no longer supported by Apple, so it's impossible to do. Um, every other channel I liked that grew till it split in multiple channels lost my interest from sheer number of clicks needed to sort through the content created. Mm, maybe. Um, the PDF format that way a lot of game companies put their online rules up in the gig. Still not sure what you mean by that. Uh, let's see. You want to see more deep dives in older titles? I'm not opposed to that, but again, we can go back and look at older titles, and I push for that, and we definitely, because I want to fill up our library, but the fact is, is doing those older titles is only interesting to a few people. It's not really cool if we say, hey, there's this great old game. This is amazing. Yeah, it's out of print, but don't worry about it. It's great, uh, and those videos don't get a lot of views. And I'm trying to be as honest as I can with you guys here. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I don't want to be super pragmatic when it comes to the Dice Tower, but you've got to be pragmatic. I talk to my contributors about this all the time. I just had a conversation with someone the other day about it, like say, hey, if we spend two hours on a video and that video gets 10,000 views, and then we spend 20 hours on a video and that video gets 11,000 views, was those extra 18 hours worth it? For me, the answer is no. I really don't think so. And you can say yes, but you are establishing a brand of quality. But for me, that quality needs, we need that quality. There comes a point where you're just doing more quality, but it's not paying off. And not everything is about the number of views that we get, but it certainly is a factor that comes into it. I believe, and I might be wrong on this, so I look at the strengths of the Dice Tower as compared to many other things. Well, one, we're very strong family friendly. Uh, number two, we have very strong personalities and we try to get you in with our interaction between the different people. Three, I believe we're, we're the one YouTube channel that you know 
We'll call them like we see them. We will say a game is garbage if we think it's garbage, and we'll have no hesitation doing that. In fact, I've been thinking about making it like a new tagline of the Dice Tower and, and publishing that as, hey, this is our shtick. This is the thing that we do that the other channels don't. Because I'm always trying to figure out, okay, what are we doing different than the other channels? And I think one thing that we do is, hey, we stay when a game is bad. Even though, incidentally, my initial reputation was that I'm a softball reviewer, but I think that's going away. Someone handling the social media. I had someone handling the social media before, then they kind of they kind of left on that regard. Um, I would love if I had someone who would just tweet out when we did video reviews. See, this is one thing I'm, I've been working on with video reviews is that uh, when a bunch of videos go up on a dice tower on a certain day. I like to tweet them out. Now, I've used a, a program, I forgot the name of the program now, um, because I have it all set up automatically, that has my Twitter attached to my Instagram, attached to my, to my Facebook, and when I tweet, it goes to Facebook. So great, I've been really trying to increase the interactivity of that. But the fact is, the videos, we usually have our videos go up, I have this timed, like for optimal time when they go up, and so many videos go up at one o'clock, I usually put one good video up at two o'clock, but I don't want to tweet them all, so I try to tweet them out throughout the day. But I forget about it, right? Like, oh, this one's supposed to tweet this hour. And this one's supposed to tweet this hour. Now, I could set these things up automatically, but I don't want, you know, I could set it up so that when the YouTube video posted it, tweet it. But I don't want it to be bland. I want to sometimes say a couple words about the game. And if someone was willing to help me out with that, I would take it. But again, it's a very volunteer position. And I found in the past that this kind of fades away after a couple weeks or so. Um... The look back series is really interesting to me, but figuring out which games are in look back video is very difficult. I know you put them in the description, but it's a little clunky. Do you think a title format like look back, month, day, year, top three game titles would be better? I don't know. I mean, I only talk about them for a little bit of time, and I talk about 18 <laughs> games sometimes in these videos, so probably not. Have you had the opportunity to play the Oink Game Insider? That actually has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but yes, and I have, and I'll review it next week. Hootsuite. No, it wasn't Hootsuite. I've used Hootsuite before and I'm done with it. I don't like Hootsuite. Hootsuite was not the one that I'm talking about. Okay. Unboxing video of new games. Mega unboxing would be, you know, people like the unboxing. It'd be fun to see you open your unboxing, unboxing, unboxing. All right. We'll give it a whirl. This means, though, I need to remember not to open my games. <laughs> um, I need to make sure to not open the boxes that come in. I'll, or maybe try to figure out, because sometimes when I unbox something, like right now, I'm going to be getting some stuff that is uh, Christmas presents for my kids will show up, but they won't take Dice Tower on them. So I'm boxing. So well, that'll be interesting. We'll see. So I'll save them all up, right? I'll save them all up for a week or something, and then one day each week I'll say, okay, here's the games that came out this week. But what if I get a game I'm really excited about? And I, wanna, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe we'll try that. You probably wouldn't want to see the way I open these shipping boxes, too. Um, minus one to Google Hangout. Does that mean you want it? Or minus one to Google Hangout. Hmm. So I'm getting all kinds of different things about the the Google Hangouts. What are you fiddling with in your hand? Yeah, I apologize. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm a hand fiddler. It's called OK Play. This is a game that I was in the middle of reviewing. Uh, you'll see this show up uh, later this week, probably. Could you share some more inside baseball in the, in the industry itself? Well, I can to some degree, but I got to be careful about what kind of uh, stuff I share because some of it's just proprietary, right? I, well, sometimes a publisher would talk to me and they'll say, no, you're not supposed to tell people this. And I always tell them, look, unless you specifically tell me that I can tell people this, I'm not going to tell people. Because I like to hear honest opinions from him, and I like to know this. And so I can generalize as time goes by and go, look, 
publishers have told me that this, 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 and this, and I'm not being specific about anybody else, but I can learn things and be more useful to you guys, I hope. One of the things I'm trying to do is become somewhat of an expert on the industry, and I can do that by listening a lot to different people. We should do a live play session regularly once a week. Um, I appreciate that, that you know that um, <sighs> live plays are really hard. There's so much work involved with them. Just me setting this up here. Um, okay, so to do this, and I'm kind of afraid to, to move stuff too much here because I have it set up. But well, I, have a, I have my camera that's focused on me right now, and I got the, the microphones plugged into the camera. And the camera then runs into, this is a black magic device, okay? It has an HDMI cable that comes into here and then has a uh, Thunderbolt cable that attaches to the computer. This is the device that's necessary to convert that to this. If I'm not using that, then I'm going to be using um, the webcam, which is not very good at all, right? So that, that device is a pain to set up, a pain to get on here. I'm using then a program then that takes that stuff and sends it to YouTube. So there's like several different steps here. So that's just for me doing this. When we do live play, I got to do it, make sure that these wires are all out of the way so that you don't see them. We're trying to get good views, set the computers up, uh, make sure the wires aren't cut out. And one of the biggest problems we have right now is just that this room is not that big for live play purposes. We, like, we really need a lot more room around this table. And that's one of the reasons we're looking into getting a studio. Is Laura going to do any more videos with me? Well, one of our stretch goals was me and her would play a game live. So we'll do that at some point. Bring Jason on as a full-time employee for next year's Kickstarter. Oh, I can't tell you much. I'd love to do that, but I simply can't afford him. He works for, um, is it Univision? Uh, and uh, he's uh, very, does very well for working for TV. How about some highly produced playthroughs of great games like Shut Up, Sit Down, Tabletop I've done. We're good enough editors. So I know you don't like live playthroughs. Again, that's something that I would be interested in, but one of those live playthroughs that we then edit down and do all that stuff that Tabletop does, that would take a week of editing. And again, I don't want to detract from all the stuff that we're already doing. The reviews are what we're known for. I cannot cut back on the reviews. Would you consider making a monthly video like we could review with just the best games of the month? Well, we already do best of the month. In fact, best of the month is coming out this week or next week. We talk about the best games of November. I don't know if I want to duplicate that. Um, oh, well, I guess that uh, I should probably shut down here. I've been going for an hour, and it's 11 o'clock here, so probably want to get things. Have you thought about going on Patreon? I'd back you for sure. Uh, the thing about Patreon that I don't want to do is I, I, the reason I don't run Patreon is because first of all, I'd get accused from people of double dipping, right? Oh, you kickstart and your Patreon and you're probably getting money from all these publishers. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so there's that. Um, but also I don't want to ask for money all the time. I mean, asking for money in January, I feel kind of guilty about that, right? I'm like, oh, okay, we got to ask for money. Folks, please support the Dice Tower. And I, and, I, and, I, and I could do it. I can sell myself to some degree, but I just, I don't want to make this where we're asking for money all the time. I want us to be a, a, a show where there's content. And a Patreon, you got to mention it all the time. Also, I haven't yet to see any of the, the podcasts or videocasts or Patreons do really well at all. I mean, they... Uh, $500 per episode for some of the podcasts I think I've seen, and that's, you know, $1,000 a month, or if they do it four times $2,000 a month, we, we better not make that little, or, or we're down to me going back to teaching again. All right, well, um, we're out of sync now with audio, and I apologize for that, but it doesn't matter. I don't know, there's something in OBS where it puts it out of sync, and there's an easy way to fix it by turning it off and turning it back. So, just something that we need. A stretch goal for a ceiling mounted tripod track system. Right, again, all that stuff is great. I'd love to do that, but we need the studio first. I can't mount a, a, a thing in here. It's just not going to work. Uh, we also need a place where we can kind of freeze it out with air conditioning because if, right now the whole house, th this room's really hot uh, comparatively because I got, um, 
I got different things up on the walls and stuff. It just gets, this is the warmest room in the house. And if I freeze the house so this is cooler than everyone else in the house freezes, we have our own studio. We don't care how much we freeze it. Okay, well, it looks like people have enough things to say that I'll probably have to do another one of these. Maybe I'll do one with Sam and Z sometime and we'll do some talk back together on these. And guys, I really appreciate all the ideas and all the thinkings and um, people going, you know, the different comments uh, back and forth. I, again, I don't necessarily agree with every, um, everything that people say or I won't take all your ideas, but I do appreciate the fact that you have these ideas. Um, I want you to know that I do take feedback seriously, um, but at the same time, I don't promise to do feedback. I can't please everybody. I don't try to please everybody, but I do want you guys to know that I listen. We have the Dice Tower Kickstarter coming up uh, in January. That's a month away, and um, so um, I've been working on that. And that power went out in the camera so <laughs> all right well got that fixed sorry about that so, uh, <laughs> um, my apologies about that. Well, anywho, um, uh, I forget what I was saying, but I think I was saying something to the effect of, thank you guys. I appreciate you watching and it's time for me to go to bed. <laughs> All right, here, well, before we go, let me give you guys a, uh, a little bit of a heads up on what you, videos you will see tomorrow. Okay. So let me pull up tomorrow's videos. Give you kind of a sneak peek of what you might expect to see tomorrow. I think I have tomorrow's schedule finished. Um, well, obviously the Dice Tower audio show is coming out tomorrow, but um, Chaz has an interview medley of different people he interviewed at uh, Board Game Geek Con coming up tomorrow. My review of Escape Room the Game, uh, my review of Coin Quest, my review of Adrenaline, my review of, I'm um, sorry, Andre's review of Adrenaline, Jason's review of Clank, a back talk where we talk about Board Game Geek Con, and a review of Beasts of Balance. Um, two of the games I'm reviewing tomorrow, I'm rating a nine. So, and one I'm rating an eight. It's a good day for reviews for me. So that's a lot of stuff coming out tomorrow. And we're still working on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Friday schedule, but there's a lot of different reviews. My reviews are done all the way to Thursday. So I need to get cranking to get those Friday, Saturday, Sunday reviews done. Anyhow, guys, I appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.